It's a time for more packages from China. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. It's time for some singer time. It's time for some fake blessed processing power from China. So stay tuned and let's go. So when I unbox this product in my package from China, Ultimate Unboxing, I think a very long time ago already, is that a lot of people did react positive to this box because this box itself looks really cool. Look at this, it looks like a mega drive. They even have like the controller ports. So I give them extra kudos when it comes to the mega driver and this box. So at the back we can find some information about what comes inside that will show you later on and an overview how you need to connect it. Hmm. So this thing called the Mega Driver. Let's see how Mega it is. And does it sound like it should be sounding? All right, so it comes in this very nice cardboard box. I can't not stop talking about it, man. I'm so excited about the box. The question remains, <laughs> will I be still excited about the product when I have tested it out? Oh man, I can't get it out. Ugh. Ooh, the packaging looks very nice. I like it a lot, even the inlay looks nice here we're going to get the system itself with a lot of plastic fantastic hey we're going to get a multi-game card with it the 200 in one then the power supply and that's basically like a five volt phone charger in combination with a very long nice high quality micro usb cable two controllers Ooh. first impression not so well then we're going to get the av out cable over here and look at that, an HDMI cable. Because this thing can play some HDMI. Ooh. All right, so the first impression of the controllers was not good. And the reason why I noticed something with the D-pad. I have seen my share of shitty fake controllers and this thing mm -mm, is not good. So first of all, what I mean is like the D-pad is a floating D-pad like always, but it is quite high. And there's more like an indication that it is in cheaper quality there is no mode button. The buttons feel kind of clickish. It's not the case that we're pressing one button and they move all of them over a part of it. And no, it's not like that cheap. We're going to get the mode button over here, start. So it's slightly different and important to smell it test. Hmm, the smell kind of nice. And that is what we're going to get. All right, so next up the system itself and here where we're going to get really interesting So first of all it weighs quite heavy again and there are some differences with the quality And I have reviewed a lot of these segments, let's say Sega clones and they're all using the same shell But this time we're going to get a very tiny on and off switch because normally we're going to these are like gigantic and very flimsy Also the reset button is not like a micro switch. It's like actually like a very nice long travel micro switch or yeah, that's what you're going to get with this version. The flaps like the same quality. At the front, we're going to get the controller ports, but sadly there is no CF function whatsoever. There is always like something they don't have. So here at the back, we're going to get AV out and very tiny jack connection. Input for five volt, HDMI out. I'm really excited about it. I'm going to go into doing capture. And here we're going to get the region switch for the US, Europe and Japan. Let's grab myself a game. Let's see how it fits in. Holy crap. Mm. Oh, this is really tight and that is something I don't like because if you need to pull them out, it's going to be a freaking nightmare. Okay, so that is more of the time a big problem with these game cards. Let's grab another one. Let's grab an original game. Same story. Most of the time what you can do is like... But I wanted to bring the testing for these systems just to the next wicked level. I tested it out in the past with some cartridges, but I wanted to test them out with all kinds of versions. And I think I've collected them all now. So with the test, we will include Street of Rage number two, because I love those soundtracks and they're great test for testing out the sound capabilities of the hardware. Then we're going to get the Bitmap Bureau Xeno Crisis. It's basically like a new game-ish homebrew. Then we're going to get Virtual Racing with the special chip. The chip that not all of the clone system will ha have the support for, or the system in general. We're going to get Sonic 3 and Knuckles, the combination card that is also not supported by every single clone system. And not to forget, an original multi-game card, just to see what happens if we're going to plug it in and we're trying to play some games. We're going to get the Mega Everdrive, the original Grix edition, and that we're going to test out because also the Everdrive is not supported by every single system. And then we're going to get the multi-game card from our friends from China. Same story, not always compatible with a system. 
Also, we're going to test out the fake weird looking Japanese version multi-game card. Then the Sonic 2, the when he becomes fluffy, or in other words, just a retro game and homebrew game just to see how it works out. And of course, we're going to check out the fake versions, the ever drives from China just to see if this game works or too. Okay, so let the testing begin on the device and let's see if it's capable of running all of these different cartridges. Like, wiggle them left to right. We can see like, just like, pull, get over here. Rawr. There is only one thing very concerning that we're going to get mono sound. And the reason to think on concerning, I wouldn't be surprised that we're going to get this also with the freaking HDMI. <laughs> The first thing that I always wanted to test is powering on uh, without a game card in it because sometimes they have built in a multi game card. But with this version, it's not the case. So let's get straight into the game testing. Alright, so let's boot up a multi game card because some of the system will have issues with it. Yep, it still happens sometimes. But it works like a charm. I tried a couple of games before, so it will boot up without any hit issue. Press the game and you can see it boots up without any issues. Okay, I want to do a quick test for the Chinese EverDrive and it seems to be working just fine. And the same also applies to the Mega EverDrive. The original one from Crit works also very well. And the same works with the Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Works like a charm. But I can already hear that the sound is not like it should be. Ugh, that sounds kind of weird. Where a multi-card, and let's say a combination card works, and yeah, there are some issues with this fake Sega. And it's not with the game you would expect it would, would be a problem with. Because when I'm booting it up with Xeno Crisis, my language setting is just all freaking messed up. I tried the game like a couple of times, the game itself is not broken. I also don't have any audio. That's it. It's kind of weird, man. It's kind of weird. And it doesn't boot up the game. It just stays in the title screen. <laughs> Holy crap. Okay, so I just needed to connect my other Retroid Sega Mega Drive clone or my other Sega China stuff, console, regret thing. Okay guys, so I just needed to show you this, like when I'm using it on a different fake console from China, in this case it's the Retroid through AV Auto, with the same way of connecting it, it works like a charm, and it also includes for the audio. So you can see like when it comes to compatibility with some of these systems, you still have some games that are not working on it. But I just wanted to do a quick test with virtual racing and nope, I really knew it before. Like this is a game that will not run on many devices, even if it will run on any clone system at all. You just need to get yourself a real Sega for that. I'm having here the PAL game and the region switch seems to be working because when we're sending it on Japanese, we're going to get ourselves the Japanese version. So the region switch seems to be working just fine. But how about the audio? We're also going to do an HDMI capture so you can see how good the audio quality will be from an AV screen capture perspective and the HDMI solution. going to get a straight capture from the device itself you can see it looks very nice but I can say that when you're listening to the sound on the digital it, it sounds quite good 
and I mean like it is better crisp and clear but the sound is absolutely not like it should be when it comes to playing some Sega Mega Drive games and of course Street of Rage 2 is a great example you can hear like a lot of weird tunes going on in the soundtrack so it's a bummer nothing beats the real original Sega Mega Drive all right so let's open up this bad boy it's quite simple removing the four rubbery feet there is no yeah, no sticker that says warranty void this time i did remove a couple of them but that is not of an issue because warranty from aliexpress yeah to your doormat and when your dispute time is over you don't have any warranty left so i don't know if you buy it somewhere else maybe you get some more warranty but aliexpress is what you see is what you're going to get therefore i love to make these videos consider subscribing hit the little bell and i show you here on the channel what you're going to get so you don't waste your money and also a reason why i want to do a tear down okay this time they made it slightly different and the reason i'm saying it like that because in the past i have seen some shitty modding for example when he had like the top cover they soldered or hot glued the freaking led in there and they soldered it straight to the main board and they didn't do it today i think there is not an oh there is an led over here like the covers they're using a little bit better springs but sometimes it is possible after some month of use they get broken that is just a main issue i have with these devices okay at the bottom we're going to get some new components because this is the hdmi edition here we're going to get the pcb that is connected with a ribbon cable over here with the main board itself then we're going to get the main board itself where all the magic happens with of course the cartridge slot well, let's take a close look at the front here we're going to get the two controller ports that are soldered to this PCB over here that gives the communication to the main board also with a nice ribbon cable. Reset, on and off. And then we're having the main board that comes with the famous TCT 6803 chip that I have seen before but like the chips they try to mimic the Sega Mega Drive but they can't mimic the blast processing power or they like to say it of course in the 90s. Over here, I have some information, the Mini Sega 2 HDMI main version 1.1 and it's made in 2020. Over there, some information of the main board, but let's close it up and let's talk about the final conclusion. All right, so this is what we're going to get with this mean machine. Now, mean machine, it's a clone, one of the better clones, especially when it comes to the controller. I must say that it plays very nice for a fake one. I was surprised even that it looks and smells very cheap. Okay, so the 16-bit system, it's way better than I've seen with the different system, but nothing beats the original Sega Maker Drive. Keep that in mind. What well, a thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become one of Wicked Family, and I will see you in the next video.